Yo, what's up guys? Thank you for tuning in um, to this video, I guess. Not really looking to make a series out of this. Just a few things that uh, I thought about recently that might not be common knowledge within the MX Bikes community and I figured, hey, what the hell, might as well make a short little video on it. So the first thing that I actually want to go over in the video today is uh, dabbing. So uh, I'm going to turn automatic dab off. That's going to be our goal here. We do not want the rider to dab on his own. We want to control that. So from everybody should know at least that whenever you're riding, uh, whether it's third or first person, anytime you're sitting and you turn, your leg will stick out, right? And so this is kind of like a, you obviously do this in real life to help keep the bike up. Uh, but if you end up going over too far, then just like in real life, you'll stomp your foot into the ground to keep the bike up. Uh, and from what I can tell, this is the dab. So here I am sitting, turning. Um, let me actually move the third person camera. And that may, might not be something that many of you know you can do, but you can adjust this third person camera. It is shift plus V plus an arrow key left or right. So here I am sitting again, I'm turning. And as I start to slow down and the bike gets a little unstable, my rider will put his foot down. Um, but really what's happening there is he's just bringing himself back to the sitting position because the bike is going so slow. In reality, there is an actual button that you can use to dab. You can stick your foot out on command. Uh, from what I can tell, it only works at certain speeds, really slow speeds, uh, but it works if you're sitting and it also works if you're standing. And it'll work, uh, I think, based on whichever way the bike is turning. So the question is, what does this do? Um, is it actually even helpful? Um, I don't honestly know that it has like a, like a purpose. I don't think if you learn to manually dab in the game that you'll save yourself from crashes. But here I am sitting and I take this turn and then I start to slow up and there he goes. He stomps his foot in the ground to kind of bring the bike back up to center. Um, in theory, that's how it should work. I don't really feel like that's how it does work. Uh, it, it also works if I'm standing. Uh, okay, standing, starting to go slow speeds, and there he goes, stomps his foot in the ground. So, so whether it's uh, manual or automatic, it still works the same. You can only do it at very slow speeds, uh, or at least I, from my testing, I believe so. I even tried to hit jumps and throw whips and manually dab to see if you get some leg swag off the peg, and that didn't work. So I think you can only do it at slow speeds. Um, if you're a first-person player like I am, you've probably never noticed this, but yes, see how the foot was sticking out by the front fender and then as I start to slow up it jerks back to the peg that's him dabbing the ground um, so yeah just a little bit of FYI there for anybody who doesn't know that is what the dab is the next thing that I want to talk about um, has a little bit to do with this with these settings here I'm sure everybody is familiar with um, calibrating their dead zone their linearities uh, and their gain um, I want to briefly discuss definitions and how this can actually help with 450s. So if any of you have actually seen Reese Cooper's um, YouTube channel and seen his latest controller setup video, he mentions that on his throttle, uh, he uses smoothing. This helps so that the, that the throttle isn't quite as responsive. It's not like you know full power as soon as the controller recognizes input. There's a smoothing feature in the game which is implemented and now the bike if i'm understanding how press works right and i might explain this wrong but the result should still be the same um, when you're when you have smoothing on your press is at 40 percent. at least that's what reese's is that's what i run because i like it a lot um, it basically in my mind just means it takes a little bit more throttle input on the physical controller before the game starts to recognize those inputs um, essentially what this boils down to is whenever you're on a 450 uh, and you're in a corner where when you know you maybe you get on the throttle a little bit too early and the rear end slides out on you we've all had that happen on a 450 on the throttle setting you can enable smoothing um, adjust your press and release so that way the throttle uh, the, the trigger is a little bit more sensitive and that does help somewhat with 450s but you still have to practice your throttle control uh, because hammering it too early is always going to spin that rear wheel out uh, but that does um, lead to the question of what do these other things mean? I'm not going to... Um, dead zone is, is pretty self-explanatory. 
Um, it's just the range at which you input on your controls before your game starts to pick it up. Personally, I keep my dead zone at zero because I, I want the game to know I'm pressing the throttle as soon as I press it. But for my lean, I have my direct uh, my, my dead zone on 7% because uh, my controller has a little bit of, of stick drift, so I don't want it to think I'm turning when I'm really not. Uh, but gain is really the one I want to focus on here, and the way that I interpret gain is uh, either a decrease or an increase from default uh, in terms of like input sensitivity. So when you first get the game, your gain is at 100% uh, on your lean. Now, if you go lower than 100%, then your leaning input is going to be a little bit less sensitive. You might have to actually push the stick a little bit harder to get the bike where you want it to go. If you increase your gain at over 100%, then you should have to do fewer inputs in terms of range of motion on your stick. It doesn't take as much force or pressure to the stick to make your rider start turning. So I've turned my gain down because that's just where I'm comfortable. On the throttle, however, you cannot turn the gain down below 100. It'd be great if you could put that thing to like 50, and then even when you hammered it on the 450s, the tire would take a little bit longer to spin. That would make it more consistent, but the game doesn't let you do that. So that's why the smoothing feature comes in handy, because now you're telling your controller to um, require more pressure from the trigger before the tire starts to kind of break traction and spin. So um, that is another helpful thing. Um, and one more thing that I will mention is sometimes you'll see riders, let's see if I can kind of mimic this, sometimes you'll see people who play and whenever they play and they're in a corner, they're constantly like tapping the stick. You can see it on their bike. They're, it's like they're a freaking weeble wobble and their bike's trying to bounce back up to center and they're just tapping to keep it down. Um, and then since I play with smoothing, I don't have to tap my stick. Like my controls require me to just lean the bike, take the corners, and it, it's just like a smoother process. So if you ever see somebody who's tapping, or if you're a tapper, as we like to say, and you're wondering how you can kind of break that habit, try turning on smoothing, uh, because that is this is kind of the play style that you have to have when you're uh, riding with smoothing. So um, yeah, so that is it really for the video. Just a short one, kind of wanted to cover some of those things. Um, leave a comment down below if, if I'm wrong on any of this uh, or if there's anything that you would like to discuss.